Welcome, Milana and Yamikani. Uh, we are about to kick off our discussion about the Enhanced Transparency Framework today. Can you please uh, introduce yourself? Yep. Uh, thank you so much. It's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, my name is Yamikani Idris uh, from Malawi. I'm an environmental officer in the Ministry of Natural Resources and Climate Change, but I'm also a transparency expert at national level and international level. I am the coordinator for the LDC on transparency, and I'm also a technical expert reviewer under the uh, UNFCCC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Fernanda. It's, it's good to be here discussing with Enhanced Transparency Framework with you. Uh, my name is Milan, uh, Milan Dungana. I work for the Ministry of Forest and Environment uh, uh, in, um, in Nepal, and I work in the Climate Change Management Division, which looks into the you know, climate related uh, activities and negotiations uh, and I lead the section that is responsible for the uh, climate reporting under the uh, UNFCCC as well as the Paris Agreement. Thank you. So as COP27 uh, approaches, we are hearing more and more uh, about the enhanced transparency framework and, and the importance of getting ready for its implementation. But before going into the details of what it is and, uh, and, and what's about that framework, I, I would like to ask you, what do we mean by transparency? Uh, before I get to your question, uh, for us, we take transparency as a backbone of the Paris Agreement. And when we say transparency, uh, we mean countries being transparent about their action as they are taking on two key areas. That's the action and the support. So when we say action, uh, this is the action countries are taking to adapt to impacts of climate change and to reduce their emissions. And the support, uh, we usually talk about the technical and financial support to implement those actions. So in simple terms, <laughs> if you are developed the country, that means reporting on the support you have provided to developing countries. And if you are a developing country, that means you are reporting on the support you need and the support you have received to implement your actions. So the ETF is a reporting framework which guides countries in how to report on these activities. So the activities, I mean the action as well as the support. So the overall idea is that by using this framework, we will have a real clear picture on how countries are delivering on the commitments they made in the Paris Agreement. And this picture on how individual countries are delivering can give us now a big picture on how we are doing collectively to achieve the Paris Agreement goal of limiting temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius. And by the use of the word enhanced, I understand that the enhanced transparency framework is a tougher, is an enhanced reporting system than the one we've had until now, right? Yeah, it's it's a much tougher system, Fernanda. So, firstly, in terms of the information that countries need to provide, it's it's more comprehensive. Uh, as uh, as Amikani mentioned before, uh, we need to we need to report the support as well as the actions. So uh, for an example, the countries need to submit the full greenhouse gas inventory reports. And it also uh, require much more detailed information about the uh, emissions than, than in the past that, that we are doing right now. And countries also need to provide much more information on how they are implementing and achieving their uh, national climate plans. Uh, sometimes we call it the uh, nationally determined contribution as well. Uh, this includes the information on the mitigation uh, uh, and adaptation as well as uh, the loss and damage uh, due to the climate change. So for example, how countries are implementing their emission reduction plans and adaptation plans or the actions they are taking uh, to minimize and address the loss and damage uh, due to the climate change. Uh, gathering such information domestically is also a challenge for, for the LDCs uh, as we lack uh, a robust international arrangement for information uh, and data sharing. So, and secondly, 
It is. Uh, it's 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 frequency is also a challenging uh, to report those kind of comp comprehensive information every two years. Uh, this is also a very challenging task for the for the countries uh, like <laughs> LDCs that that doesn't have such kind of uh, experience in reporting um, before. Okay, thanks, Milan. So it, it really seems a lot, indeed, a lot of work. And I was wondering what, what will be the, the benefits then of having this uh, tougher uh, reporting system? Uh, the benefits should be created. And also by mentioned by Milan, it's indeed, indeed a tougher system. And uh, we expect us to be well versed enough and ready. But the toughness comes with a lot of benefits. And the really transparency is about uh, exposing what countries are doing and what they are not doing. So there is nowhere to hide uh, for all the countries. So the benefit is that countries become more accountable. They are under the spotlight. Everyone will be seeing, everyone will be leading the reports. And they are open to more scrutiny. And this is a good thing. It put pressure on countries to deliver what they said they would do meaning that everyone will be able to check what countries promised in their NDC because it's voluntary. The NDC, their national commitments, we saw parties are committing to becoming net zero. Others are committing to provide more finance. So this will put them under pressure to deliver. And also it is going to build trust. When countries show they are playing their part, delivering what they promised, it builds mutual trust between parties. And the tougher, more stringent in his transparency framework is a big part of building trust. Through the framework, we can clearly see what actions have been taken, and we can clearly see whether they are delivering what they said they would, or if they are really going back on their promises. So this is absolutely fundamental uh, because trust lies at the very heart of the Paris Agreement. The success of the whole Paris Agreement really depends on the trust. Everyone has to do his or her part to deliver what they have promised. And the trust will be key. So thanks, Yamikani. So now uh, you made it clear that uh, having this tougher reporting system brings uh, benefits such as increasing uh, countries' accountability and building trust in the Paris Agreement. But is there a but, Mila, on this uh, new system? Uh well, yes, there is, there is a, a big, big but. Uh, as, as we talked before, like uh, it, it needs more comprehensive reporting. So this comprehensive reporting demands more resources and more capacity and more expertise and more knowledge. So these things are particularly challenging for the LDCs uh, from the institutional and, the, and from the experience point of view. The LDCs are, are ambitious. Uh, we are committed to doing everything we can do to meet the requirement of, of the enhanced transparency framework under the Paris Agreement. But the reporting is more comprehensive and complex uh, and the new elements have been added in the reporting and the information needed is very detailed. And those information that uh, requires in the reporting uh, and domestically has um, scattered in many places. So we need, to, we need to find those places and to just uh, pack the information in, in one place. So, and we have a very limited experience of uh, reporting in the past. Many, uh, many LDCs uh, are reporting a few, uh, few reports in the past so that, that all of these uh, puts LDCs under huge strain on, on the reporting. And that is why we need more technical and financial support from, uh, from the developed country parties. And this was agreed in the Paris Agreement as well. Developed countries who have an experience in comprehensive reporting uh, need to provide support to implement the ETF and build uh, our reporting capacity as well. And um, uh, you are uh, negotiators and also transparency experts uh, um, from LDC countries. So. Uh, as a transparency expert, what, uh, what advice can you give to, to other LDCs uh, who, who want to report under the ETF? Uh, well, that's a, that's a very, very good question, Fernanda. It is really very important to clearly understand the information that is required in the reporting. And, and that is um, 
that is we can start from there so we have number of decision texts and and as well as the detailed guidelines on those matters available online as well so we need to consult those kind of documents to just to list out those uh, list out those informations that that are required uh, for the for the reporting in the enhanced transparency framework that will be the first step for the countries so we need to also uh, important to look into the stakeholders uh, uh, that is that has those kind of information so we need to identify the institutions that might uh, able to provide the information and that data that are required for the reporting under the under the enhanced transparency framework data on the on the actions as well as data on the and the support and data on the adaptation and loss and damages that all talked be, um, talked before and also we need to strengthen uh, their system of reporting and data flows based on their current system. So we already have some experience in the reporting. It, it is much uh, much less experience than the developed country parties, but we have communicated national communication reports. We, some of us have reported the biennial update reports. So we can just build on those kind of information and those kind of system that's, uh, that is already a, a, in place. So. And also the, the most important, another thing is we need to communicate to our stakeholders that, the, uh, that about the benefit of the reporting as well. It is not only the fulfillment of the Paris Agreement uh, obligations, um, but the reporting also took uh, a look back uh, and review our progress on the climate actions uh, taken by the nations as well. So that is how we can establish a sustainable institution, institutional framework, uh, as well as the data flow system uh, for reporting on the, under the enhanced transparency framework. Well, that's, uh, that's great. So <clears throat> a lot about uh, knowing what uh, are your needs, are, are your gaps and your uh, capacity uh, um, needs and, and about uh, building systems. And, and just um, uh, talking about your own countries, like uh, more in a, in a concrete examples, what stage of the preparatory work are you in or, or what are the things that uh, are you doing in Nepal, Milan? Mm, well, as I, as I mentioned before, we are just building uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the foundations that we already have in, in MRV. So our measurement reporting and verification system that is, that is already in the place. So we just start from there. We also prepared uh, a framework for reporting under the ETF uh, on the basis of those MRV systems that is already there. And we also did the mapping of the stakeholders. So what kind of stakeholders are uh, very important during the reporting, during the data collection, or during the um, uh, during the implementation of the enhanced transparency framework, uh, we also continuously doing our capacity building activities as well uh, with the help of the UNFCCC secretariat, and we have some kind of bilateral cooperation with the countries uh, to to enhance the capacity of reporting and uh, making a system of uh, data data flow. And, and making the institutional framework more sustainable. So we have also prepared a syllabus for the short courses on the enhanced transparency framework with the collaboration with the uh, university in Nepal. So that will, that will help us to more systematically uh, develop the capacity of the people that is engaged in the enhanced transparency framework as well. Oh, great. That sounds like a very solid uh, first starting point, uh, Milan. And, and, and what is happening in Malawi, Yamikani? What, what, uh, what is your country doing to, to get on board with the, with the ETF? Yeah, uh, thank you so much. And uh, Lily, let me start by appreciating what Mel has said. And uh, as Malawi, in this case, we have learned a lot uh, from what has been presented by Milan, uh, starting from setting up the systems, linking with the universities, as well as um, enhancing our national capacity of experts. And uh, Lille in Malawi, we are also doing similar strides, I think, under the CBIT project. Uh, so far, I think uh, we have already initiated uh, developing of an information management system, which will be online. And also, we are working with the investors. We are finalizing recruiting uh, the university's experts who will work on emission factors. We want to develop local emission factors in a key um, emission uh, sectors. And also, uh, more importantly, to sustain the reporting process, we want to set up a transparency unit. And currently, we have initiated the functional review process, 
where are uh, experts from the Human Resource Management Department, which is a government department entitled for uh, recruiting or overseeing recruit process in the government, is reviewing uh, the uh, our department is set up so that they should uh, set up a specific unit uh, for transparency, which will be able to recruit uh, experts and indeed um, it will be able to provide the resources for those experts to operate strategically uh, for reporting. So those are some of the key um, uh, progress which we are making and we are hoping that by the end of the project, which ends uh, next year, we should be able to uh, build adequate and strong systems at national level uh, so that we should be ready to report um, uh, in the long term and under the ETF. Well, that sounds uh, very interesting. And well, uh, moving to my last question, and now with your uh, climate negotiator hat on, Yamikani, uh, and from a transparency perspective, what, what needs to happen at COP27 in Egypt in, in, in a couple of weeks? COP26 was very crucial for us because we needed to finalize the MPGs. We needed to agree on the rules uh, which we all adopted at COP26. But the work doesn't end there. We are now going into a phase where we need to implement the rules which we agreed we adopted at COP26. So this is a very important process. And to be key on that one, we need to finalize on the discussion, on the support, the financial and technical support, which will be provided to developing countries, in particular the LDCs, to fulfill implementation of these stringent and more strong reporting requirements, which we all agreed. So that will be key and key priority for developing countries, including the LDCs. We need a concrete decision on that one. And more importantly, is the adaptation and loss and damage consideration. You are aware that this is one of the key priorities in our NDCs. Most of our NDCs considers adaptation and loss and damage as being on top of our ambitions. So we need to agree on how this information will be considered in the reporting cycle, more importantly, in the reviews, because we need feedback once we submit the report on how we are managing and uh, indeed we are averting the losses and damages as well as adaptation in our respective countries. So these are the key things of which if we agree on those, we'll really uh, put the Paris Agreement in practice and will support most vulnerable countries to achieve our Paris goals. Thank you. Thank you very much, Milan and Yamikani, for the chat today and for all your insights and knowledge about Enhanced Transparency Framework. And, and I hope to see you both in Egypt. Yeah, thank you. See you. Bye. Thank you, Fernanda, for this opportunity. Bye. See you.